Um, thank you everyone for actually coming along for this session. Um, I know there's a few people I know, there's a few people I don't know, but that doesn't matter. It's all about growing the community that we've got. Um, the first session that we've got tonight is called Doing Viz for Social Good. And that in itself has a couple of different names in, in applied. But before we talk about what we did, I just want to talk about a couple of the people that we helped. So up on screen, we've got two fantastic people that I love, um, Sonia and Nova. They're from Sunny Street. Um, Sonia's a nurse and Nova's a doctor, and they left their jobs in the public health system to start their own business called Sunny Street as like on the T-shirt. And what they do is bring their medical skills and the medical community that they have to help people in um, vulnerable positions and the homeless. So for anyone that um, outside of Queensland that has heard of Orange Skies, where they have actually provide showers and laundry um, services to, uh, to the homeless, Sunny Street does that same thing, but for medical services and with their volunteers around emotional support. So um, I met them probably a couple of years ago when they went through the Australian Health Accelerator. And I just knew that um, they're going to do fantastic things. They are doing fantastic things. And every time I see what they do uh, and every time that I hear them on ABC radio or anything on social media, um, it just brings good, positive vibes to what we can do as people and as a community. And hence, this Viz for Social Good event, um, Frederick Ferry, he's got his little face up on screen. He's actually on chat tonight. Um, came to me saying that, hey, let's... Um, I'm going to run this event. What do you think? Do you want to get involved? And I said... Hell yeah. Um, I didn't step back. I didn't think uh, about um, what I had on. I just chose, okay, let's just get in there. Let's do this. And um, this story that we've got for the rest of the period is actually about some of the things that we went through and the process, the people, um, and some of the tech that I uh, went through um, to actually bring this to life. So. Um, just a bit of background, Viz for Social Good is uh, a global volunteer organisation. Um, I don't know much. Um, I only really got introduced to that earlier this year. Frederick's been, um, been part of that community um, for quite a while, but my take on that, it, um, born primarily from a Tableau community in terms of doing data visualisations, um, Fair number of the community are based in Canada in terms of, so Vanitha Lucas was one of the people that reached out um, as part of this. Um, and ultimately through this, what they do is visualizations to represent data for social enterprises and social good causes. Hence the name Viz for Social Good. Um, and when Frederick came here and said, okay, let's do a data, uh, do a data thon. So a data data analytics, data visualization hackathon um, with a local uh, social enterprise, Sunny Street. So this is how this event came to be. Um, and we'll talk through some of the outcomes and some of the things that happened along the way. But ultimately, it was a, this happened, unfortunately, when COVID sort of kicked off, when everyone started moving from work from home. So this was supposed to be an in-person event, but turned into a virtual event on Zoom. So this was one of the first ones I had the pleasure of to do virtually within this period. And it was fantastic that we didn't just have people in Brisbane. We had people from India, Japan, uh, from Canada, all over the world actually contributing to that. Um, so um, this is part of this story. Um, because it's a data form and we were helping people, um, Sunny Street with data, uh, it all, one of the first things when we came and registered was actually talk about the data. And we said, hey, here's 
seven data sets that we could actually work with. So what I've got up on the screen came from a couple of different sources. Uh, and I'm really happy that Robert's actually online. Um, so some of the data came from uh, best practice. So best practice is a GP uh, uh, solution to hold uh, patient information. So most of the diagnostics and immunization and medication information was there and also the patient record. Um, so tandem um, in the middle, that actually stands for time and motion study. So Robert is actually from Cognium and Tandem's his product. So um, Robert helped um, Sunny Street to actually help map out what the, some of the different patient conversations were through time and motion studies with their digital app. So he provided that data there. Um, with all this data, um, that was then presented to, uh, I think there were about 70 registered uh, participants that actually um, contributed to this event over that four week period using this data. Um, but I suppose part of the story that I'm telling you today is, is part of my personal experiences and journeys and part of the, the whole outcome. So um, just to give a bit of context from everyone's got their own perspective around solving problems. Uh, I know Frederick has his, has his fantastic way of doing his visualizations and storytelling. I know Robert's got, got his thing. Um, and what, where I come from is I come from a app dev, DevOps, uh, lean startup, bit of design thinking. And now since I've been in this, this kind of team that, is working on fast, uh, really self-service, get to the point type analytics, then doing the data engineering and doing self-service analytics is part of my, my bag. So the way that I looked at it was pretty much a, a, a process of trying to understand the data that we've got. I'm lucky enough to actually work in um, the health in uh, innovation community up here in Queensland. Um, found a community called Hacking Health Queensland, working with people like Frederick and Paulette uh, and Robert in the health tech uh, industry uh, up here in Queensland. So it's definitely something that we've been doing, not just in startups or corporates, but in government as well. So taking that and then using what we know from startups and um, just lean as a methodology, just working that through, which is perfect for this this kind of environment, how do we actually experiment? How do we actually know we're making an impact? And then ultimately through experimentation and understanding the data, then, okay, what can we do? What are things uh, that we can impact uh, in terms of this? So um, we talk about patient journeys. We talk about uh, understanding the, the customer experience and the patient experience and having the patient in the middle of a lot of this. So, in terms of understanding the impact and understanding the data, I really came through and under, and tried to put myself in with Sunny Street as the middle person, the person enabling um, the healthcare, but really focus on the people that they're helping being the, the, the vulnerable and the homeless. So that's the type of process I've went through. And um, just to give you a glimpse as far as some of the data that was there, um, I've actually got everything up on GitHub. So this is my personal GitHub uh, repository. Um, and just to demonstrate, just give you a bit of a glimpse as far as some of the data that's actually available. Um, here's the sh shift measures, which talks about the different shifts that they actually went through. So every shift had a, a report date, a start time, end time, um, a place where they actually held them. So here, Sunny Street did for the data set that they that, that they provided. They most of that was around the Sunshine Coast and around Brisbane. Um, so you've got the Red Cross, you got the Wesley, you got the Queens Park in the Ipswich, um, the Shack up in Sunshine Coast. Um, they had latitude, longitude information, and then moving across, they also then had different measures around what did they focus on in that shift. So in here was almost a a view around the kinds of conversations that they had or what did they help um, the people 
that the community that they were helping. So whether it's allied health or whether it's around medication, whether it's referrals, um, all that kind of came into bear. So coming back to my process, um, when I started off with CSVs, um, the, the quickest thing for me to actually then start looking at that was actually using to um, something that I have access to from Oracle, Oracle Analytics. Um, it's a desktop tool, self-service, and I'm um, sorry, I was playing around, so I'm just jumping a gun a little bit there. But um, what I was able to do is actually open up very similar to some of the other things, other tools out there. I can go in there and open up the CSV file um, and then start just playing around with, um, with the data. So this is me just pulling in the CSV data that we saw up on GitHub. As you can see there, some of the different services and places that we were at. Um, I'm just going to lay that in. Um, latitude, longitude aren't measures, they're just attributes. So what I'll do in here is, is just change them around a little bit so that we can actually map them out. Um, so latitude is actually really an attribute. I'll just do that. I'll do the same thing for, um, for longitude. So I'll just do that too. Um, I'll apply that and that, that will now treat them as, as attributes. So the next thing I'll do is just create a pro. Next thing I did was create a project and all of that now becomes available to me. So that, okay, if I just want to drag them on, I can do that. And then from there, um, they're not just visualizations, they're just the data points in terms of um, where they had their campsite. So now I can then see, okay, this is a map of Brisbane and Sunshine Coast. Um, we can then start looking at it. Um, what I, I was interested in, in terms of who they were talking to and what type of conversations they were having. So um, the, the first thing I did was look at, okay, how many conversations were they having in different areas? So the size of bubble makes that really simple. Um, then there was other ways I was then looking at, okay, could I drill in in terms of different shapes and sizes? Um, but before, stuff like that's relatively um, typical, but um, the other bit that I sort of used out of the box was this explain feature, which allows me to really let the tool then describe a bit about, okay, what are the relationships without actually me uh, looking too deep into it. So from here, I could then see, okay, um, for each of the different campsites that they had, then most of them were really sitting around about uh, four to eight, where um, there was only a few of them that were uh, more than 20 per, uh, per shift. So that gave me a really good quick insight into, okay, what could I focus on? What type of data do they have available for me to actually play with? Um, and just to um, just to show something a um, little bit, um, something that I found, let me just pull up the spreadsheets. Um, they actually had uh, this patient CSV file. Um, and it was a bit scary. And the reason why it was scary, and this came from the GP um, best practice and the GP solution. Um, I'll just expand that out. Um, the, the number of data points just goes on and on and on. So in an Excel spreadsheet, I don't know what RJ means in terms of numbers, but I think that turns out to be over 400 fields in that one file. So for me to do the same thing and actually work that out, it just it just racked my brain in terms of how I use that. And that's probably where I then um, I was able to do these kind of um, things really easily because of the simple data sets. 
but I needed to actually go in to the system and actually augment that. And that meant that I actually changed my tech stack a little bit. Instead of just doing CSVs and that, I actually introduced Apache Spark in the mix such that I could then take the CSV data and then use that and transform that into a different format. Um, what I did, um, because I've got my DevOps hat on and I wanted to have a database so I could just really just easily just spin up, um, what I then used was Spark to um, save that in a Postgres database. But instead of installing Postgres on my laptop, I just ran a Docker image on that to then just give me a database for me to point into. And because it's a Postgres database just sitting there, uh, I was able to then connect Analytics Cloud into that. So um, from a Apache Spark perspective, um, there's nothing really complex in terms of importing a CSV and doing some data manipulation. So it gave me the chance to do all my timestamps, change that around, get that uniform. I had some issue. There were some issues around the start and end dates because the start and end dates were, uh, especially from a reporting angle, it was more about when they put the data in. So I could then use Apache Spark to augment that to be more of a okay. This is the day that it was reported at, um, what it actually executed at, as opposed to reported. So I could do some data cleansing in. Um, so all of that's no different in terms of how we actually do it. So very simple in terms of data engineering and using uh, Spark. I could have used Panda. Um, I was it was something that I it gave me an opportunity to learn. And all this stuff is all about giving back to the community, but also learning along the way. So um, as part of this process here, I also use Maven to actually run the whole process. So um, Maven allowed me to if I go Maven clean install, then allowed me to run my code, uh, actually execute the Apache Spark, um, run up the cluster, run the code, um, and deploy to the, the Postgres database. So um, all that code, because it's in, in code, is in the same place that I've got up here um, in my Git repository. Um, under the Spark um, directory. So that's where my POM is and that's where my source code that I've got is as well. So just made it really simple for me to actually just, hey, I need to, if, if they gave me a new piece of data, I could just run it through, I could just load it back up. Um, all that code was all doing the heavy lifting for me. So, um, and that was really the step three. Um, and I was able to go back and forth, back and forward um, in the issue manner that DevOps is, but it also allowed me to explore different areas of the data um, around, okay, what is my, bring into the design thing, what's my problem? Um, because volunteer safety is important. Um, the number of conversations and the quality of conversations is important. Um, the number of people that they're meeting in, and and do they have, an, are they seeing the right people that are, uh, are most needy in terms of the community? So, and this is where not just what I did, but lots of the people that contributed as part of the Visual Social Good event were able to do as well. Um, here's some of the code that I actually did just as a screenshot. And because I had time series data, then doing that in, uh, in the tool was really simple for, for me to then lay out um, and just really visualize and use the visuals as a way of uh, analyzing the data. But um, all the data, especially a lot of the diagnosis information, I hadn't really looked at. And when you got 300 or different data points and a lot of it was sparse. So you, it wasn't natural to see what was happening in the system. So um, this is where I used one of the tools that both um, uh, that I had in the kit bag called Oracle Data Science and some of the things that Deepak is going to go through lands in this space. Um, but what I was able to really easily do by 
by importing the data set uh, into this is to even just one run one command because shown in notebook. And that was able to give me these different types of correlations and features around the data set without necessarily spending lots and lots of time and energy understanding how I do it. I can just run one thing and I could just start looking at, okay, what does this mean in terms of what, uh, what the problem is? So not having a lot of time um, to do this and just want to focus on the story and focus on where we can benefit not just Sunny Street, but benefit the people that they're helping, then time's critical. And there was lots of different visualizations that happened over that course. And as I said, there were about 70 odd different participants and people tuning in. Um, there were 20 odd people that presented visualizations as part of the event. And this is one of them. Um, it was fantastic to actually see um, we had demographers, we had people from, not people from healthcare, we had people that actually worked in main roads. Um, we had people that worked uh, in many different industries and we weren't necessarily all knowing the industry or knowing this. Um, I think one of the things that I really liked um, and just a shout out to a couple of the ones that happened, we, we had someone that came from uh, a statistics uh, background from one of the one of the Queensland um, departments and what they did was actually combine um, statistics ABS statistics around um, the general practice around how much would it cost someone that is uh, in the let's say in in a normal that could actually access normal healthcare what would it cost to them and then they mapped that back to how many people did Sunny Street actually help in that in terms of um, the number of people and what the services were providing. And they were mapping that back out, which actually really showed the true value that uh, Sunny Streets were actually able to help, right? What, the, what, what, what value were they actually providing the community? So that was a really interesting one. Um, another one that I really liked was um, some of the ways that we were looking at um, the number of visits and how do they, um, who were they actually supporting, um, whether it be by age, whether it be by geography, uh, whether it be based upon other statistics in terms of um, other social economic factors that are in different areas and how were they helping these kind of people. So um, this is not just about what I did. This is what we all did. And this is why when we talk about some of the taglines, right? It takes a village and community matters. It's the aggregation around how we all help um, each other to help everyone. So just to give you a bit of feedback around some of the things that Sunny Streets themselves said, um, these things when going back through, and it's been about three months since this event happened, uh, it just still puts the emotion that, we did do a good thing and it's not just one thing it is something that we are continuing to do and hence people that i know um, that have joined this um, even just even some of the early introductions with samita a couple of years ago and then paulette and frederick and robert and some of the other names that are, are on this list this is not a once-off this is us as a community making a difference and making a difference. And this is part of why we are having this session today and tonight. Um, so just to close out, um, so what's next? A um, couple of things that I know Frederick's um, working with Sunny Street and um, Frederick had help with uh, by a partner called uh, Key Data. Um, Fred, we did a lot of the um, data cleansing and because it is patient data, then it is, we, need to, we needed to make sure that the patient data was safe to be consumed by the community. So Frederick and Key Data are helping Sunny Streets out to actually further enable them to take further insights around this data. So I'm um, not sure what that looks like from a volunteer perspective, but they're working that through. So for Sunny Street, so they can uh, further use this data as well as set up their business to use data better. 
And um, it's great to have Frederick on the line and on the chat here. Um, we are looking at for others to join the next This for Social Good event. Um, and we are looking for um, other social causes and other social enterprises to actually help out as well. So, um, Stephen, um, what I wouldn't mind doing is actually put up that second poll to just get a gauge from the community that we have here um, to see what the interest is to, um, to get involved and get amongst it. And we'd be very appreciative if you um, provide your contacts, reach out to Frederick, myself, or anyone else, uh, Stephen, uh, Meet Up Madness, to actually um, uh, link up to be part of this community. So, Stephen, I wouldn't mind getting the poll uh, up and running. Oh, sorry, Jason. Um, it's already up. And so far, oh, we have been cool. getting yes. Yeah. We have been getting a whole <laughs> lot of yeses on wanting to get involved. Cool. Fantastic. Fantastic to see. So thank you very much for 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 that. Um, and um, that's um, it's not just me, but everyone else. And I'm definitely going to make sure that Sonia and Nova actually uh, hear about the, the sentiment that you're bringing um to this so just to close it out um here's my repo the data is actually there um so if you do want to actually have a look around some of the data and maybe even contribute what you think from your perspective could be something that could be contributed to then um happy for you to take clone it uh, even just have a look at around the data um reach out to me if you want to know more um, and we can connect you back into to how that works. So um, just to close it out, thank you. My name's Jason. These are my contacts. That's the GitHub. I'm happy for you to take a screenshot and connect up with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, on email, um, any of those kind of things. So appreciate your time tonight. So, Amanda, I'll, um, right, thanks, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, if you have any questions for Jason, please um, put that on the questions box. So while we're waiting, Jason, if there's any questions, let me run a, another poll. You've got an accolade of well done coming in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you much appreciated hey this is this is more of a passion more so than a uh a, a tech um presentation but uh it's good when those tech with purpose comes out we've just done a quick survey to see uh whether you're considered to be awesome or very awesome <laughs> <laughs> okay my, 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 my hair is tall enough. Yeah. No, it's funny. It's terrible. No, I'm only kidding. This is your awesome. That's all good. All right. So I'll just take the controls back first. Alrighty, again, Jason, thank you. That was a really, really good thank talk. Um, so far, we don't have any questions, um, but for those attendees, uh, we won't, after the talk, um, I mean, after Deepak's talk, we won't be closing the session right away. We'll be spending like maybe five to eight minutes, um, you know, on the session. If you want to interact with um, everybody, you know, we'll just um, be chatting on through the chat box and whatnot. So if you do have a question by that time, please feel free to post that on the chat box or the questions box, okay? All right, okay so, you, um, sorry, just, sorry, what's very, that? Just very, if you could give uh, Ram Shankar the microphone just for a second, I'll tell people briefly Surely. what the story was. Okay, <laughs> let me look for him. So, I'm going to tell you a hypothetical story here. It's, it's, there's no evidence, and if there's no evidence, there was no crime. So let me tell you. 
Sorry, wait, Stephen. Wait, 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 do I give Do I give Ram the mic or give you the control so that people can see you? No, 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 I don't want to see people looking at my face when I'm okay. when I'm confessing. If you can give the microphone <laughs> to Ram Shankar, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm so looking for him. Together, what we try and do is that yeah, we put together a, like a bit of a sort of an appealing graphic, you know. So sometimes, and I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically again, sometimes, and I'm sure nobody else has done this, you do a quick search on Google, you find a cool graphic, and you go, I'll have that. Thanks very much. <laughs> so this is, this is obviously somebody else I'm talking about. So anyway, I pinched this logo off, off, off Google, and I posted it up on our site. And as a result, we got lots more people registering, which is just fantastic. Now, what are the chances of this? I am connected up with a fine young chap called Ram Shankar, uh, who's, a, who's a data science intern from, from Bengaluru in India. I'm connected up at first level with him. What are the chances of me pinching one of his logos from one of his talks? <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to bow very, very humbly to give all, all credit for the graphics uh, to Ram Shankar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post up a little link uh, to his original talk and encourage everybody to have a quick look. It's all about data science for social good as well. Uh, it was a five-member team or something using uh, data to do good for a village tucked away in a rural corner of northern India. So Ram Shankar, is that about right? Maybe you can just give us a 30 second overview of, um, of the wonderful stuff that you're doing in India there, and then we'll come back for Deepak. Sure, I can do that. Thank you, Stephen, for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome. And I do apologize again. No, no that, that's totally all right. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So uh, about the article, we, we were actually, uh, like Stephen already mentioned, we are like a five-member team. Uh, we traveled to a northern village in India, and our task was pretty simple, uh, at least on the onset it was, that we had to go there and uh, talk to the villagers and identify uh, a major issue that was uh, kind of pulling them away from the path of progress, talk to them, uh, be an active part of their community, and also passively observe the hardships they were facing. So with the help of a few participant observation methodologies, we identified um, we identified that water management and distribution was a very severe issue at the village. But then now was where data actually came in. We had to, I, we had to validate our finds because we couldn't come back to the university and tell them that this is the problem. And now you have to go there and create a technological solution for it unless we had clear validation. So we conducted a survey by asking uh, questions in a passive format to the villagers. And I ended up analyzing the data to come up with some very important insights that there was terrific imbalance in how water was distributed from house to house, while some houses received a huge deal of it, some didn't. So uh, we presented that to our higher authorities. And finally, now we have one more team, which will be going there, I, I guess, probably after the COVID crisis is over, to implement a solution of creating a better water distribution system so that every house can get the right amount of water. Yeah, so that's a, that's what we did in Adjust. Awesome, 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 sir. It's really, really good to hear that there's, that you know, that there's like like minded people from all, all over the planet tr trying to do good uh, from you know data science. So well done. Thank you, um, Graham. Maybe if I was able to twist, you know, to twist your arm. Yeah. <laughs> We, we might be able to get you back just to do a little bit more of a talk on that and to go into a little bit more specifics. Sure, I would love it. Excellent. Thank consider, you. Consider yourself earmarked. Thank you, Thank you. Have to get up to like Deepak now. Thank you very much. <laughs>